Happy New Year! It's 2017, I'm wearing my Bitcoin t-shirt in celebration of the fact that it passed the thousand dollars. Also because I don't have too many t-shirts and this is one of my favorites. Uh, I've been doing personal finance for some time now, I've been focusing on the subject. I'm probably going to move on to some, some other area I would like to to, well, have a little bit of cyclicality and change up topics from time to time. But the idea, the question that I want to share with you today still relates to personal finance. And that is the question of what is your cutoff point? So on the podcast on Valiant Growth, I've been talking a lot about early retirement and how you can get through it through frugality and whether in the final, the, the most recent episode, how important it is in uh, how, how important is early retirement versus just the mindset of resilience and independence. But one of the important questions that is well worth asking is what is your cutoff point? So you're aiming to if you're aiming to retire early, and even if you're not, it's a question well worth asking is how much money do you need per month to live a comfortable life? And then multiply that by 25 and, sorry, by 300, and then you get how much you need saved up to be able to safely withdraw 4% and to live on it as an investment in perpetuity, you already know this this thing. But I think it's worth if worth considering what is your cutoff point? What is the point where you're like, yeah, you know what? That is enough. Because there's a culture, a very prevalent culture. I don't know, I'm not even sure if this is Western or not, but there's this idea that, well you can you can always spend more money. So what's your financial goal? It's more. And while that is certainly true, it's you can probably see that it's not the most productive idea and it's not necessarily going to lead to the most happiness. And uh, aiming for infinity is a goal that's pretty hard to meet. So yeah, I think I think this is a question well worth pondering because that could mean if you get a real concrete number, which most people don't have, then you know that, okay, in financial terms, this is what I want to accomplish. And then you can say, okay, well, based on current trends, that would take X amount of years. And then there will come a point where you're, you're done. Like you're basically done in terms of finances. It doesn't mean that you stop earning money, you don't have to do that. Uh, but it does mean that as far as your personal needs go and that of your family, uh, that goal is met and it becomes something of secondary importance. And with careful planning, that can be easily achieved in anything from five to 15 years. There's this interesting vision of early in early retirement extreme where uh, basically Jacob says what if everybody saved up enough money in their teens and early 20s so by the time that they're 25 everybody is, is living on their investment and I think it's very interesting to play out the economics of that and how that would look like if most people were doing that but still that to get there you need this cutoff number so my number is, well, it's a range. So if I'm just talking about myself and uh, just, just solo, single, as I am right now, it would be somewhere around 150,000 pounds. That would probably cover an acceptable life here in the UK and a pretty comfortable life in cheaper areas. And my upper range is half a million pounds. If I have half a million pounds, that's a ver that to me, the 4% that comes from that to me is an extremely comfortable uh, life here in the UK and a downright luxurious one in 
every almost every other place around the world even including a family so if I had the point where I would say okay as far as the financial aspect of my life goes I'm done that would be this half million pound mark but already when I hit 150k I'd say I'm pretty secure I can shift focus away from this and well the big secret is that <laughs> even though I have a fraction of that and it's going down at the moment I've already shifted focus away from it but yeah that's uh, you can listen to Valiant Growth 47 for more details on that so yeah I think that's the idea I'm, I'm curious what your cutoff point is uh, one final thing that I wanted to say is that there's this idea of financial abundance I, I got it from Joshua Sheets of Radical Personal Finance and that is all the money that is beyond this cutoff point as I call it I think he has a certain level associated, associated with it that I, I don't remember off the top of my head but above this level it's pretty likely that if you've gotten that far you've built such habits that you'll probably keep earning income if you, if you continue to work you'll probably the money's gonna keep rolling in as the old it's not the sum in the bank but who you become and if if you get there you very likely have become a kind of person who generates income as a habit even as the kind of a side effect of their activities so the next question then will become <clears throat> what can you spend the rest of the money on and that involves questions of inheritance and it also involves questions of global impact so in my case all of my needs would be met at that point but there would be my need for impact where this money could keep having an impact uh, <laughs> so so once you you go above a certain amount at least for me I wouldn't I wouldn't spend that on luxury I'd probably feel worse in a luxury car than I don't know in a minivan or something but I would definitely enjoy carefully selecting people and causes to support um, I could bankroll or at least give good incentives to a number of podcasts for example that would be pretty cool and I'll probably do that when I get there so that's another question to to ponder and it might very well be that you will do that as well but until then I'm just curious what's your cutoff point <laughs>